bluegrass country, Lexington, Kentucky, Commonwealth Stadium, where today the Georgia Bulldogs and the Kentucky Wildcats will meet for the 38th time. Georgia 5-1 on the year, 3-0 in the SEC. Kentucky also 5-1. They are going to go back to our studios in Atlanta for our football action report with Craig Sager and Paul Honig. They're expecting 58,000 people here at Commonwealth Stadium. This game originally scheduled to be played at night has been moved to noon for our telecast. The temperature expected to be in the high 70s. It's about 70 degrees right now. Georgia leads this overall series 28-7 to 2. Two schools have been annual opponents since back in 1956. Georgia last year scored 37 second half points and erased a 14 win last week. Became the winning. Georgia leading 10 to nothing at halftime. The Wildcat marching band about to perform here, and we'll be showing you some of that coverage in just a couple of minutes. You know, we talk about the football glamour positions of uh, quarterback, wide receiver, etc. The position of tight end is not really a glamour position. It's important, but it's often unheralded, such as the case with our player of the week, Scott Williams of Georgia. What do you call it? Poetic justice today. Williams recovers a fumble, runs it in for his first touchdown. A 16-yard run here against Kentucky. He has two catches for 17, so he's continuing his performance, and he's moving into the ranks of the heralded tight ends in the Southeastern Conference. Now, before we go down to the field and enjoy the sights and sounds of the Wildcat marching band, we're going to pause to take a closer look at each of today's participating schools. the Wildcat marching band on the field here at Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington, Kentucky. William Harry Clark is the director of the band. Club Major Kelly Gross, the finance junior from Russell, Kentucky. And we're going to be hearing selections Jack Miraculous, theme from Indiana Jones, and my old Kentucky home. Let's enjoy the 260-member Wildcat marching band. Good for you. Thank you very much. Coach Vince Dooley, Dean of Coaches in the Southeastern Conference with his 167th career. Commonwealth Stadium, Lexington, Kentucky. Today, the University of Florida could clinch at least a tie for the Southeastern Conference Championship against the Wildcats of Kentucky, who are 7-2 and two on the season and are hungry for a major bowl bid. We should have an interesting be right back to our studios in Atlanta with Craig Sager and Paul Horning after these messages. Today's game, the 35th meeting between Florida and Kentucky, a rivalry that began in 1917 on Thanksgiving Day. The Gators have four straight wins. They lead the series 18 games to 16. Last year, it was Florida 24 to 7. That game was played in Gainesville. You look back to 1976, though, the Gators were on their way to what they hoped would be an SEC championship and were derailed right here in Lexington, Kentucky. It's a tough place to win. Ask anybody who's been in here this year. Kentucky has has a 7-2 record. We did see Kentucky playing here this year against Georgia only about three weeks ago into the middle 40s. The overcast sky is keeping the temperatures down, but it is really a good day for football. If you're from Florida, it's a cold day. If you're from Lexington, it's not an atypical afternoon. It was an early October evening, and the largest crowd to ever see a game in Kentucky, over 58,000 fans, showed up for UK's homecoming with Rutgers. Kentucky lost their next two games against perennial Southeastern Conference powerhouses LSU and the Bulldogs from Georgia. So by the time North Texas State came next, the Cats were up against Vanderbilt. Both teams needed this one to keep any hopes of a bowl alive. Catch you see how mean they look. <laughs> One of the 12,500 former University of Kentucky football players in our blue of his family tonight as he traveled down to meet a lot of his old Kentucky friends. See Dave McLean is the coach on the left, the man with the gray hair with the phones on. That's Bill Dudley. He's been his offensive coordinator for eight years. McLean, coach of the year in the 
MAC Conference back in 1975. He's done an outstanding job. First coach ever to come to Wisconsin. First new coach ever to come to Wisconsin and start off with a winning season. Came right out of the box with a winner. He coached with a lot of great coaches, too. People like uh, Bo Schimbeckler, uh, Pepper Rogers, Woody Hayes. Said he learned football from Schimbeckler, organization from Pepper Rogers, and discipline from Woody Hayes. That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> first, he's a quarterback in college, too, just like Claiborne. I think they both play quarterback and safety. Dave McClain, his wife Judy, with him here. Tim and I got to know Dave McClain and his wife Judy when we... Uh, broadcast the Japan Bowl a couple of years ago. They're very fine people and it's great to get together and see them again. Two of the best coaches in football in this game has gone that way. Somebody has come up with the big play to keep them in and to give them victories in a lot of the games. But now we're talking about a Wisconsin team here who on the way to this Hall of Fame Bowl has defeated Ohio State, Michigan State, Purdue and tied Iowa. So we're talking about a team that's had a lot of pressure and we'll just see how they respond to this. Now ahead 13 to 7. He was Things aren't going well. He wants to be able to look Mike Howard right in the eyes and settle him down. Like number 23, the first down. Running like a man celebrating the birth of his new kid. We keep saying that, but this is an unusual performance. By trying anybody, and there Michael he goes. Jones is wide open. Down he goes, about the 20-yard line. Clock down to 39, 38, and still counting now.